Hello everyone. A couple of years ago, I decided to write my own chess engine, inspired by all of the activity in the deep learning area. However, I realized that it is always important to understand the basics first, and even programming a basic chess engine can lead you into a massive rabbit hole of interesting ideas, design optimizations, and advanced algorithms. Today, I'm going to walk you through the development process and all of the most important ideas behind the Hewali chess engine, which uses a simple static evaluation function, the standard minimax algorithm, and a bunch of other cool optimizations, which allows it to play the game at a quite decent level. The first thing that we need is legal move generation. Although this sounds simple in practice, there are many caveats that one needs to look out for, such as en passant captures, discover checks, castling into checks, etc. In this example, you can see that the white king cannot castle on either side because the black bishop on c4 controls the f1 square through which the king needs to pass in order to castle. And the black bishop on g5 controls the c1 square on which the king would land if it decided to castle queenside. In the same way, the black pawn on b6 uh, cannot take the knight on c5 because uh, it is pinned to the black king on b8 by queen on b4. I did not want to code this up myself as very good libraries already exist that perform move generation quite efficiently, such as those using bitboard representations. I used the move generation code from Stockfish, which is, as far as I know, the current strongest chess engine, which is not neural network based. Let us now try to understand a few basic concepts as to how the game of chess is played. Chess is a two player game where turns alternate between both players. At the starting position, it's white's turn to move. And white has a bunch of options. For example, pawn from a2 to a4, pawn from b2 to b4, knight from g1 to f3, and so on. Once a move is played, now it's black's turn to move. And then black has a bunch of options depending on what white plays. For example, for the pawn move a2 to a4, black could play a7 to a5. This repeats until the game ends, either by one player winning or in a draw caused by any of the game mechanics. What we see here is a move tree and it is expanded to a depth of one move or two plies, where a ply indicates half a move. A computer chess engine looks at all the branches in this tree from a given root position and evaluates the terminal positions, that is, at the positions at the leaf nodes of the move tree. We would discuss evaluation in detail a bit later, but first, let us understand how these evaluations at the terminal positions are propagated upwards to the root position. Here, I've simplified the move tree to three moves per position. The average number of moves or branches emanating from a node is called the branching factor. A chess move tree is usually huge with an average branching factor of about 40. This means that there are on average 40 possible moves to make at each position. Coming back to how the evaluation at terminal nodes are propagated upwards, let us assume we have the following evaluations at the leaf nodes after a black move. A greater positive evaluation means that a position is good for white. So a greater negative evaluation is good for black. Since a black move follows the leaf nodes in this example, we need to pick the move which minimizes our score. Hence the evaluation for black 
on the first move would be 3. In the same way, the evaluation for black for the second and third moves would be minus 2 and 2. Finally, we arrive at the root node and here it's white to move. Hence, we pick the maximum of the, all the evaluations at the child nodes. So the final evaluation in this example is 3. This, in essence, is the Minimax algorithm for two-player games. For this move tree, we ended up evaluating nine terminal positions. However, there's a clever optimization possible here that would reduce the number of evaluations without altering the final result. After we are done evaluating White's first move, uh, the net evaluation is 3. This is now the minimum evaluation that white has at this point. On white's second move, we notice that a black response leads to a minimum evaluation of minus two, which is lower than our current minimum evaluation. So regardless of what the evaluations are for the rest of black's responses, black is certain to play the first move unless they have a better one. Hence, we can stop evaluating at this point and effectively prune the rest of the branches. Similarly, for white's third move, after black's first response, we already have a minimum evaluation of two, which is again less than our current minimum evaluation. And so we can prune the rest of the branches arising from black's responses here as well. This strategy is called alpha-beta pruning and is an essential step to reduce the exponential complexity of Minimax. If you've been paying close attention, you might ask, what if the moves were ordered differently? Indeed, if Black's responses to White's second and third move were ordered from worst to best, we would not be able to prune that many branches. For this reason, it's very important to order the moves from best to worst. This largely depends on the evaluation function as well. Another optimization that is implemented in the Hewali Chess engine is the concept of iterative deepening. Iterative deepening implies that we don't do a full search at the given depth, but rather iteratively increase our search depth. This may seem counterintuitive since we will end up evaluating some moves on every iteration. However, we maintain the move tree from past iterations and preserve the ordering of moves from best to worst at every node of the tree at lower depths so that we can effectively prune the tree at higher depths. Now, let me explain another concept called transposition. In chess, it may so occur that two different sequences of moves may end up in the same position with the same side to play. For example, if the sequence is e4, e5, knight to f3, and knight to c6, we end up in this position. But if black played knight to c6 in the second move, and white goes knight f3 and e5, we end up in the same position with white to move, uh, but with a different starting sequence. For such positions, we need not evaluate the move tree again. In Hewali, a map of all previously encountered positions to their evaluation is stored, which saves unnecessary computation efforts in exploring previously seen lines again. These maps are commonly known as transposition tables. Transposition tables are very important, especially in the endgame, where very deep sequences of moves might need to be explored in order to estimate the proper evaluation for a position. Now we come back to how terminal positions are evaluated. This is equivalent to estimating how good or bad a position is for a player without calculating any further. There are three components to evaluation in Hewali. The first one is the static material count. The various pieces are assigned the value 
according to their movement capabilities on the board. A uh, pawn is given a base value of 100. A knight and a bishop are roughly equivalent to three pawns. A rook is equivalent to five pawns and a queen is equivalent to nine pawns or slightly less than two rooks. The king is, of course, assigned a very high value. The second component is the p square table weight, which is a way of augmenting a piece's value depending on which square it lies. In chess, the central squares are very important, especially in the opening, and hence higher weights are assigned to central squares. In this example, we see the white knight's square table. The central squares of e4, d4, e5, and d5 are weighted 20 each, and their adjacent squares are also weighted higher. A knight at the edge or a corner is usually a bad piece, and there are negative penalties for the knight to move to those squares. The third component of evaluation is mobility. This is a way to estimate how mobile the pieces for each side are. This value is computed by counting the number of squares that a piece can move to, but not counting those squares which are controlled by an opponent piece of much lower value. In this position, the white pawns occupy the following squares. The black knight on c6, hence cannot occupy e5, d4, or b4, since these squares are controlled by the white pawns. Hence, the black knight on c6 effectively only controls five squares. The same goes for the black bishop on e7. It cannot come to a3, b4, or c5, as these squares are controlled by the white pawns. Uh, similarly, the white queen is restricted by the knight, the pawn, and the bishop from moving anywhere on the A file. All right, now that most of the conceptual stuff is explained, let me take you through the important bits of code. This is the repository for Hewali Chess. Let me go to the engine. So this is the basic structure of a node in the move tree. It consists of a move which operates on a given position, its evaluation, and an ordered list of the child nodes from best to worst. Now oh, let's take a look at the minimax function. Here there is a search on the transposition table. And if that move has already been evaluated, the evaluation score from the transposition table is returned. Otherwise, we perform a search. If the node uh, does not have any child nodes, which means it's a terminal position, we evaluate the node calling our static evaluation function and then adding it to the transposition table. Otherwise, we recurse. We take a look at uh, all of the child nodes in order and then run minimax on them and then the current evaluation is updated here depending on whether it's white or black to move we also update the values of alpha and beta and if beta less than alpha at any stage we stop evaluating further for playing a move i've implemented an opening book which basically reads a bunch of opening positions from some master games and then plays any of those moves at random if it finds the current position in the book. Otherwise, it begins to evaluate by calling the engine. So the ordering of moves happen here. It's simply ordering in decreasing order if it's white to move. So the best move is the highest positive evaluation and in increasing order if it's black to move. This is where you see the iterative deepening approach. We start at depth of one 
and then call minimax on the depth. And for every computation, we reorder our move tree and use the same move tree so that our ordering from previous evaluations are maintained. Another important optimization in the search is to look out for moves where terminal position ends up in a capture. And it may be so that the immediate next move could be a recapture. And if that is not considered, the evaluation at the terminal position would not be the correct evaluation. And this ensures that we also consider the moves immediately after the terminal move where a recapture is possible by the opponent. Yeah, so that's about it for the engine. Now let us take a look at the evaluation. Here you see the static piece values for each piece and the piece square tables for each piece. For the evaluation core function, uh, we check whether the game has ended. And this is if there's a checkmate on board or a draw has occurred and then we return that evaluation. Otherwise, we check for the material and the mobility, and we return a difference of material between white and black and the mobility of white and black as a log difference. And that's it. That's all of the core parts of Hevali's code. If you'd like to expand on the code, feel free to fork the project on GitHub. The current engine play suggests that there are a lot of improvements possible, especially with the evaluation. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any other specific questions and I'll be glad to answer them. Until next time, see you all around and thanks for watching.